They call themselves outlaws, branded by others as rebel riders with a criminal cause. This is the life I chose. I knew I was gonna go to jail. Their membership numbers in the thousands worldwide. Drug dealing, gun smuggling, prostitution, and extortion have earned gang members millions of dollars around the globe. To law enforcement agencies, outlaw motorcycle clubs are highly organized criminal organizations. They're selling drugs, they're beating people up, they're killing people. And their numbers are growing. They are the last bastion of outlaws in America, really. Outlaw motorcycle clubs are some of the fastest growing gangs in the world. They call themselves One Percenters because they are the 1% of motorcycle riders who operate outside the law. And yeah, what you're a one percenter, you live your life your way, regardless of what anybody thinks. That was a pretty cocky, arrogant son of a and all I wanted to do was ride and fight, <laughs> you know? The 1% of lifestyle. Living it, breathing it. Hell's Angels, Pagans, Outlaws, Mongols, Banditos. The names embody power and rebellion. Although there is one club called the Outlaws, law enforcement labels all one percenter motorcycle clubs outlaw motorcycle gangs. But when people call us a gang, I find that very offensive. Um, you know, I've, I've never been a part of any gang. We're not a gang, we're a motorcycle club. They're very dangerous. They're actively engaged in criminal activities. Outlaw motorcycle clubs first emerged in the 1940s after combat veterans from the Second World War banded together to socialize and ride motorcycles. In 1947, a three-day rally for motorcycle enthusiasts in Hollister, California, descended into chaos. Dozens were arrested for fighting, drunkenness, and street racing. The following year, in 1948, the first Hells Angels chapter was born. The American Motorcycle Association deemed that 99% of the motorcycle riding population were law-abiding citizens. And it was the one percenters that were the outlaws. Shortly after the club's creation came the distinctive trademarked Death Head emblem and logo. Rival clubs sprang up and eventually joined forces. The Hells Angels now has 230 chapters across America and in 26 foreign countries. Back in the 70s, it was uh, pretty much a lawless club. You know, you did what you wanted to do, partied, doing drugs, uh, whatever, riding your motorcycle. It's kind of something that was real intriguing to me. Current members hold to a strict policy of never talking with the media. This member agreed to talk only on the condition that we hide his identity. We consider ourselves the elite of the elite. We are the best. We're number one. Us as a Hell's Angel Nation, we don't hang with any other club. We're number one, and that's the way we want to stay. For decades, members of the club have been involved in assault, extortion, bombing, murder, and drug trafficking. Weapons and drugs go hand in hand with the Hells Angels. We're the baddest of the bad. We can do anything we want to do. Those who show a willingness to join outlaw biker gangs start off as a prospect and are not allowed to wear the full club logo. You got an initiation period of 12, 16 months, which consists of 
watching the bikes, you go out to bars and stuff, watch the clubhouse, doing uh, duties around the clubhouse, stocking the bar, cleaning up, stuff like that. To become a Hell's Angel, you have to commit. Your life revolves around the club. The more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. In the old days, you used to go out and there'd be one other member and you'd do a crime or something. And you'd, just, you'd be in a situation and you took care of the situation, you know, it, it meant beating somebody up or whatever. It helped you move up the statue a lot quicker and get you in the club. A prospect needs the votes of full members to wear the patch. Um, I've known some brothers, uh, they jumped out and, and, and fights and stuff and they've been shot by rival clubs and they've been voted in the following week. John Beale, the former president of the Maryland Hells Angels, became a full patch member of the club in 2003. I've been riding motorcycle clubs for the last 20 years. I was the, the, the talk of the town. I was one of the best guys. We were initiated as Hells Angels. Best day of my life. As soon as I changed that patch, I became this monster from just the jacket I wore. I put that patch on and I paid the price. You know, I eventually was arrested. I eventually got charged with a, a bolt crime and I eventually uh, did time. I eventually lost almost everything I owned because of that patch. But I would do it to, again tomorrow. John Beale was arrested on drug and gun charges after a raid on his chapter's clubhouse. Today, he stays close to the culture through his tattoo shop. Anyone who rides a motorcycle, I don't care, at least any time you've ever put your ass on a motorcycle, you wanted to be a Hells Angel. The Hells Angels was the best. The Hells Angels lifestyle includes patches, piercings, and tattoos of allegiance. Across the country, police keep a close eye on one percenter motorcycle clubs. All clubs have common enemies, and it's law enforcement agencies. I mean, that's who's against every motorcycle club out there. I don't care if you're big or small. I don't care if you're one percenter. I don't care if you're a family club. If they can't control you, they're going to shut you down. Today, Minnesota police are bracing for the arrival of some of the most dangerous one percenter leaders in the country. The Hells Angels East Coast leaders are holding a secret planning meeting. In four months, the Minnesota chapter is hosting one of the Hells Angels' biggest gatherings of the year, the USA Run. Hells Angels runs are notorious for excessive drinking, drug use, and violence. Minnesota Hells Angels leaders have chosen Carlton, a small town outside Minneapolis, to host the USA Run. The Hells Angels USA run it hasn't been here in Minnesota since 1969. Every charter in the United States is going to send somebody here, at least usually two members minimum. And then there'll be members from around the world attending also. Motorcycle gangs are a, a tough nut to crack. Um, it's a secret society. It's organized crime. The Hells Angels meeting gives police a chance to identify the men calling the shots for the gang. Inside this unmarked building, Hennepin County Sheriff's Captain Chris Oman holds his own secret briefing. Omot calls his gang strike force together to put in place a surveillance plan for the Hells Angels East Coast Officers Meeting or ECOM. All right, guys, uh, we're going to do some surveillance today on the uh, Hells Angels uh, at the clubhouse, primarily. Uh, the ECOM meeting is supposed to start at 2 o'clock today. That's the intel that we have so far. His team will be documenting who comes and goes and relaying the information to law enforcement agencies across the U.S. This is the current president, vice president, uh, my understanding information we got, he's the guy in charge of the USA run this year. And I would say most definitely he's going to be present today. Mm -hmm. 
Captain Omot called in Steve Cook, who runs an organization that specializes in dealing with motorcycle clubs in the Midwest. Cook can offer valuable advice to police on dealing with the upcoming Hells Angels rally. He's worked a few of the uh, USA runs in the past, and Steve, you want to just kind of feel what we're going to be expecting this summer? Conservatively, you're looking at anywhere between 350 and 400 full patch, you know, outlaw motorcycle gang members uh, up in a small concentrated area. Cook will join Omont and his team as they surveil the clubhouse. Last but not least, treat them with respect. If anyone's going to be a jerk, let them be the jerk. Let's treat them with respect. Get our intel. Let's get that intel out after the meeting today. All right, guys, let's be safe. 